Last week I did a photo shoot of a friend of mine with the Samsung S21 Ultra, at the same time with the iPhone and with my camera. Now we're gonna check the three RAW files and see how much we can push the RAW capabilities of the Samsung S21 Ultra. I'm really curious to see the result. So let me turn on my screen recording. For this video I will use Lightroom Classic and here are the three files. The first one is from the camera, the middle one is from the iPhone and the left one is from the Samsung. Let's go to the develop tab. My reference image is the camera because the camera has killing dynamic range. It can recover a lot of information. I already cover graded the camera raw file. So here is before and after. And let me show you how much I can push the shadows. You can see a lot of details from the shadow area. If I push the exposure up and push the shadows up, you can see so much details in the shadows and you can see that there is no noise. And let's see what can we do with the iPhone now. So if I push the shadows, you can recover quite decent amount of information. First I want to see how clean are the shadows in that scenario. You can see a lot of noise, especially here in the dark area. That's actually a little bit surprising that the iPhone is a little bit cleaner in the shadows. See here the cabinets, they're really blurry compared to the iPhone. And here they're more, more sharp. Let me see the original photos, let me reset. Okay, here are the two images after color grading. On the left side is the Samsung, on the right side is the iPhone. And even though that both images have the same color temperature, and there are some differences between the images. The iPhone is a little bit warmer. Samsung gives you a little bit colder tones, no matter if you shoot RAW or JPEG. That's very interesting. When you zoom in close to the hair, you can see that Samsung is making much better details in the photo. You can see also her skin here. There's so many spots and the skin compared to the Samsung is so much cleaner. Check the eyebrows here, the area, the highlights. Samsung is definitely handling better the highlights. Here. Check the lips. On the iPhone it looks that there is a lot of fake sharpening or some kind of filter is applied. And the Samsung is not struggling with that. I'm really surprised of the result. Check how much cleaner is the skin of the Samsung, damn! Let me find another raw image from Samsung and let's compare them. That's really interesting. So on the left is the Samsung, on the right is the iPhone. Let's zoom to the face. And as you can see, the Samsung is doing so much better job in the details. The face is so much cleaner. Check how sharp are the eyes and you can see the eyelashes. Just check the iPhone. The iPhone is really a horrible job. When you're posting something on social media, those uh, small things will not be noticeable. If I want to do something like frequency separation on the skin, I'll definitely prefer the Samsung image. It's so much cleaner and so much nicer. But there is one thing I like the iPhone a little bit more. When I'm working with the RAW files, uh, the iPhone RAW file handles the highlights a little bit better. I really like the smoothness and the gradient the iPhone does of the skin. See how smooth is that transition from here to here and the color grading is not much different. Yes, Samsung has more colors and you can work more, but the gradients between the highlights and the shadows on iPhone are handled better and that makes the image look a little bit better when it's zoomed out. When you pixel peep it and when you zoom, Definitely Samsung is the winner, but I really like the handling of the highlights on the iPhone. I want to check the sky here out of the window. That's one more area Samsung struggles a little bit. It's making the colors really, how to say, saturated. Uh, when you see what Samsung does to the sky, it's adding a lot of blue color and a lot of sharpening and saturation. It's really prominent, it's changing in some way the colors. 
In that case, iPhone is a little bit closer to the reality. Here, the, the ugly spot here is a cloud. There were a lot of clouds and uh, two phones were taking a little bit different perspective. So I was having the Samsung here and then the iPhone is here. So when you rotate a little bit the angle, obviously the iPhone was catching a cloud here. Unfortunately for the next image, I don't have the raw photo from the iPhone. I have only JPEG, but with the Samsung, I have the JPEG and the raw and you can see the difference. So here is the JPEG. On the right side with the iPhone, you can see the reality of the sky. That was really the sky how it was back then. And here with the Samsung, ah, what to say? It's, it looks really different and it looks a little bit fake. It looks photoshopped. Here is the raw image from Samsung. It, look, it looks a little bit more subtle. And you can see definitely that the sensor on the Samsung is a little bit bigger because the background is a little bit more blurry. There is a little bit more bokeh. Let's check the skin texture. What to say? iPhone doesn't have mostly any skin texture. As a photographer, I definitely enjoy the picture more from the Samsung because when you start photoshopping and especially when you do really good Photoshop uh, with uh, frequency separation, with dodge and burn, you are so much flexible with the Samsung image because there is so much texture to work with. With the iPhone, you don't have that texture. I think we can definitely see it with the bra. Interesting, interesting. If you zoom close to the bra, you can see that the Samsung is struggling from some kind of moray. Moray is that uh, color noise that it's happening when you have some complicated pattern. The phone is not handling that well. You can see that it's something like a rainbow happening here in the bra. And the iPhone doesn't struggle from that issue. Here the iPhone wins with the, with the bra. Even though that here there are more details, but the, the image is more color clean on the iPhone. I was really surprised of the results of that test. I didn't expect that Samsung is so much better than the iPhone, especially the details. I would say that Samsung at the current moment is two times better than the iPhone. If you zoom in the image and you see how much details there are, that means that you can really uh, scale up the image without losing a lot of quality and nobody will see the difference with the iPhone, you will have more problems. Where the iPhone Pro Row was better was handling better the highlights and handling better the covers. I enjoy the covers more from the iPhone. When you shoot RAW files with Samsung, you can play with the covers, you're more flexible. So if you're a pro photographer, that will not be an issue for you. Recovering something from the shadows is surprisingly working really well for both phones. You can recover quite a lot of information if you underexpose it with around one stop, one stop and a half. If you start pushing it a little bit further, there is quite a lot of noise. So both phones are performing uh, quite well and quite the same at the same time. For sure, there is some difference here and there, maybe half a stop, but this is not a scientific test. No matter which phone you have, iPhone or Samsung, uh, recovering something from the shadows, it will be okay. Now, don't forget to smile, subscribe, hit the like button so more people can smile and see that Samsung is the better phone. And see you in the next episode.